in Line podcast where we are helping to prepare you for whatever is next in line. As always, I am your host, Chance Pitts, and I'd like to thank you for tuning into this episode. Guys and gals, welcome into another episode of the Next in Line podcast. And I just want to say first and foremost, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. I know this is dropping a day after Father's Day, so I guess technically happy belated Father's Day. But nonetheless, thank you to all the dads out there that are showing their kids how to live a great life, how to be good and responsible human beings, and how to be leaders in society today, because that's what we need more than anything, is people who are willing to step up to the plate and be leaders in this society that we have today with all the issues that we're seeing pop up. So thank you so much to all the dads out there. Happy Father's Day, and a special shout out to my dad, who I know is listening. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Now guys, along with that, I wanted to go ahead and knock the housekeeping out as well. If you receive value from this episode of the Next in Line podcast or any other episode that we put out, I would ask that you share the show with like-minded individuals who might be able to receive the same kind of value that you are here. That is the number one way for us to grow and move in a positive direction and reach a bigger audience to help more people. That is our goal, to help people get through whatever is next in line for them. Additionally, guys, you can help us grow and reach more people by liking, subscribing, or leaving us a rating or review on whatever podcast platform you find yourself listening on. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to help us pop up a little bit earlier in the search bar as people look for personal development and self-help type shows. Now, the last thing I'm going to throw at y'all guys is make sure that you go and check us out on social media. That's at Next in Line Development on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We've got all kinds of good t- content out there. We've got just informational type stuff. We've got inspirational, motivational. And then you can just keep up with the different activities and the different plans that we have going on in general with the Next in Line Development movement. Guys, now that all of that is out of the way, uh, just to keep you all up with the current events of what we have going on, we are still heavily in the process of training for the Habanero 100 race that is coming up on August 20th in Cat Spring. Uh, Had a nice long run today. It was pretty tough out there in the heat, but felt good, and we were moving ourselves in the right direction. So I know it is a good, good thing. Now, along with that, guys, we've got some awesome guests lined up to come on the podcast to give you all some good information out of some of these interviews, uh, talk about some of the things that they've worked to overcome in their lives, uh, anything from addiction, physical health, mental health, uh, general health kind of stuff, and then just a, a variety of crazy and amazing stories that have come out of these lives these people have lived that are just impressive to say the very least but guys we'll save that for another time today i wanted to talk to y'all about a very specific topic one that's been rearing its head up here in my life lately and i know it's probably something that affects y'all as well because it is just a natural thing within human nature now guys this is something i've talked about before brushed on a little bit but i don't think we've dove into it as deep as i want to today so this topic without any further ado is Using others as a metric. Now, guys, it is natural. It is human tendency to use other people as a metric. We always constantly find ourselves comparing to ourselves to other people. Now, this is the same thing everybody calls keeping up with the Jones or whatever you want to call it. Guys, it's just it's the situation where we find ourselves constantly comparing what we were doing, the actions, the goals we're setting, what we're able to achieve to all of these other people. And it's something that rears its head up in a variety of places within our lives. Sometimes it's just in recreational fun, like one of the examples I'm going to throw at you. Sometimes it's in our physical health side, like another example I'm going to throw at you here in a minute. But we can also see it in our careers and finance and Guys, just in our weight loss and our goals and the things that we set for ourselves. It could be vacation. It could be the cars we drive. It could be the house we live in. We constantly do this. But guys, as promised, an example of this that I saw that actually brought this entire thing to fruition. Now, it's a little bit of a stretch on this one, but it is what got this idea flowing through my head and moving in the right direction. 
So we were at a family get together down here in Divine, Texas, having a good time. We had some fajitas. Uh, there was a pool party, some good music, good conversation, and just a mess of great people. And as it typically does in parties nowadays, the cornhole boards got broken out and we had a little bit of a cornhole tournament and we had a great time. There was actually an individual there that made me think of this conversation who was a professional cornhole player or a tournament cornhole player. He might not have been professional, but either way, he was dang good. He had all his own stuff as far as bags go, as far as boards go, and he had a carry bag for it all. And he was extremely talented. He knew the techniques. He knew the proper terminology to use surrounding cornhole. He was just really, really knowledgeable on the sport as a whole. Well, he also taught us all a very great deal about cornhole in a very short amount of time. And for the most part, he did very, very well against us. He kicked our butt for probably the first five games until all of us kind of loosened up, started using some of the techniques that he showed us, and we started to come back and we eventually knocked him off the board and kept beating him over and over and over. Now, a lot of it was beginner's luck, but the reason I brought this up as an example is if you think about being in that guy's shoes and how he would have compared himself to others, how he would have seen all of us goofballs in that backyard throwing cornhole and referenced that against himself, it would have been very easy for him to get frustrated or annoyed or pissed off that he was getting beat by all these guys that don't put in the time, that doesn't don't put in the practice, the effort, anything compared to what he does to try to be good at cornhole. It would be very easy for him to get very, very upset very quickly. And honestly, there'd probably be a little bit of a good reason to be annoyed with it. But the problem with that is, is you can't take that one example, that one time of all these different guys doing really good, kind of just out of the blue and having some beginner's luck, as a metric against how you are as a player yourself. He knows that he does really well. He knows that he plays in tournaments, and that's going to be something he enjoys to do and continues to do because he is very skilled. This one time is an example that is kind of an outlier. It's a situation where you know, it wasn't his best outing, and it was probably some of our best outings, and it's a situation that doesn't really give total correlation to the typical thing you would expect in a cornhole game. And like I said, guys, this is a little bit of an extreme example, but on the other side of that as well, a bunch of us goofballs probably shouldn't go enter ourselves into a bunch of cornhole tournaments expecting to win just because we were able to beat a guy that plays in tournaments pretty regularly. We would most likely go there and get our butts whooped very, very consistently by a group of guys that actually put in the time and the effort and the dedication to be good at something. So that's just a small example of the perspective of using others as a metric and how that can get you into trouble in certain situations. Now, Another example, and one that I think illustrates this just a little bit better, would be something that happened to me the other day while working towards getting ready for this race that I have going on. I know I've mentioned it a hundred times, but it is a Habanero 100 race in Houston, Texas, Cat Spring right outside of Houston, but pretty much in Houston, Texas in August. It is going to be hot, humid, miserable. It's a sandy course. And it's a 100-mile long race. This is a race that is extremely challenging. In fact, for the seven years of records I was able to go back and find for this race, there's only a handful of people that have actually finished the race in a sub-24-hour time. Now, that's a very, very challenging race. Whenever you look at that and you say, holy crap, not that many people have been able to do this, you see that this race quickly becomes a lot more challenging than most of the other races out there. And I'm sure it's because of the heat involved in this race. I'm also sure it's because of the course being extra sandy and a little bit harder to run. Now, that's going to be something that is going to be very challenging. And it's already intimidating to me because this is my first 100-mile race, 
and it's not an easy 100 mile race to have as your first one. So I've been in my head about it a little bit. I've been putting in some extra heat training, trying to get above and beyond in my training. Now I'm starting to extend out some longer runs with the 17 mile run that I did today. Uh, probably going to boost that up by fives for the next few weeks and get into some longer races or longer runs, I should say, maybe like 35, 40 mile top end run getting ready for this race. But one thing I do know is I'm a little bit behind where I would want to be in my training processes by this point. Now, I don't think I'm really that far off the mark. I don't think it's something that's going to hurt me overall. But I know there are people out there that are a little bit further along in their cycle. And that's where this comparing myself to other people and using others as a metric comes into play and has a little bit more intimidation. Because I want to be very competitive. I want to be better than other people whenever I set out to do something. I want to be the kind of person that puts in more work and gets a better result uh, just because I am extremely competitive. I've said that a million times, but that's going to be something that we often see. It's going to be a recurring theme in this development journey of mine. Nevertheless, guys, this issue of comparing itself to others reared its head up specifically within this race whenever I saw a post on Facebook yesterday. I saw a guy that is part of the same group that I'm in, Trail Running Over Texas, on Facebook, and he is gearing up with his training for the Habanero 100 race as well. Now up to this point, I've been doing some 10 milers, uh, maybe like a 12 mile day here and there. Nothing too, too crazy. Busted out a 17 miler today. But imagine how intimidating it is to see a guy post on Facebook that he just finished off a 40 mile run in the sand in South Padre Island in the hot and humid conditions. And he kept a very, very good pace the whole time. Now, this is a perfect example of why you don't compare yourself to others as a metric, because it's very, very quickly a situation where I got down on myself. I looked up at that time on his Facebook post and said, holy crap, I am so behind the curb. I am not ready for this. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get ready for this. I don't know what business I have trying to maybe finish a race in under 24 hours. I have no business trying to even show up to this race and do anything crazy because there's people like this out there that are just going to show up and do a great job. And I started panicking. I started getting down on myself and I started getting very, very frustrated with what I had done with my training cycle. But guys, I had to stop and remember that my situation is a lot different than other people. This guy probably didn't run a 100K just a couple months ago. This guy probably doesn't have the same rigorous training schedule that I've got. He's probably got some rest days here and there. He's probably got some different circumstances. And whatever it is, we're not the same person. I cannot compare myself to him because I know that at the end of the day, we've got different goals. We've got different requirements for our training. We've just, we're different individuals. I can't base everything that I'm going to do off of him or else I'm just going to eat myself alive. I'm going to see the high volume he's putting in. I'm going to see all the crazy stuff that he's got going on. And I'm going to think less of myself. But the thing is, the healthier way to use his situation and his training as a metric is to see that, hey, this course we're going to have to run for the Habanero 100 is sandy. It's going to be humid. It's going to be hot. So maybe it's a great idea to do exactly what he did. Maybe I can steal a page from his book and I can go pull a 30 miler or a 40 miler down at South Padre Island or one of these other beaches where there's a ton of sand. It's humid and it's hot. And it fits all the different needs that I would need for a good long training run for this race. As opposed to letting it be something that puts me down or drags me down, why don't I focus on the things that are within my control? Why don't I focus on the good things that I can get out of his situation and implement them into my training situation overall? So, that's just another example that I wanted to use there with something that happened previously with me. But guys, we always see this. Like I mentioned, it's other areas of our life as well. It's whenever we see the neighbors pull up in a brand new shiny car, or maybe they put the in-ground pool in the backyard and we can't afford to quite do one yet. Or maybe their grass is super green because they can afford to put in extra time and energy and money into getting sod put in or something like that that just makes us feel a little bit inferior. But on the other side, guys, 
there's probably things that that same person is wondering about and seeing with you that he's like, man, I wish I was able to do that. I wish I was able to put in a little bit more time into my health and fitness. I was able to focus on working out like he was. I wish I had time to do that. I wish I had time to enjoy more time with my family. I wish I had the opportunity to enjoy playing music. All of these different things, there's a million different examples that we don't know had the shoe been on the other foot, what really would have happened? How that person truly feels as compared to how we're feeling as we sit here and just compare ourselves to other people because we see what they have and we think it's better than what we have and instead they're thinking the same thing on the other side of the fence. It's the grass is always greener type complex that we hear. And guys, that's something that I just see regularly in my life whenever I see other people that I grew up with, guys and girls that were come from the same kind of background, same situations, and and as a result have had a completely different life experience as the other people that came from that same kind of situation. I've got friends that are wildly successful. They own their own businesses. They own their own houses. They have great opportunities in their lives all the time. I've also got friends that are working jobs that aren't quite as lucrative they may be living with their parents still and they're still figuring things out and there's nothing wrong with either one of those paths by any means but there's a lot of different situations to compare yourself to other people and feel like you haven't made it near as far now sometimes that is the kick in the pants that you do need to get yourself up and going in the right direction there are times whenever you do need to take a look at those around you and compare yourself and see how you're stacking up Especially if you're in business for yourself or if you find yourself in a situation that's heavily dependent on being competitive within an industry. That's a situation where you might have to stop and think about, hey, how am I doing as compared to this guy? How can I become better? But it's always got to be from a positive place. It can't be from a negative spot at all. And now there's a ton of other examples of this just because besides career or personal wealth or whatever finance there's health and there's fitness and there's all these other great places that we tend to do this and guys as a last example of what I'll do to illustrate the using other people as a metric and how it can be either positive or detrimental to you take my dad as example so my dad is in his 50s Sorry for outing you like that, Dad, but regardless, my dad's in his 50s, and he is in incredible shape, especially whenever you start comparing him to people in his line of work, you compare him to people in his age group, and you compare him to people of just the same social and economical things that he's gone through in his life uh, and where he started from. He is in a fantastic place within his life. Now, Whenever somebody would look at him, there's a couple different ways you can approach that situation. We always get the same kind of thing whenever we talk about running ultra marathons or working out like, well, if you if you see me running, you might want to start running too because something's chasing me. Or you get some kind of BS excuse like that or mindset to where people really look at it as a negative thing or they try to make light of this situation because they don't want to be compared to something like that. They don't want to be compared to the outlier that is this person and they get intimidated and they see it in a negative light and they start to almost put it down uh, as a way of life of being healthy because it makes them uncomfortable. And that is a way of comparing yourself to other people that has the mindset of, oh, I'll never be able to achieve that. So I'm going to find a way to move around that, whether it's with a joke or whether it's with just avoiding the topic or it's talking about how you're so content with just drinking and doing whatever and eating unhealthy and having all these bad habits. It's kind of a way of letting yourself off the hook in some ways through negative sides. Now, on the other side, there's been a lot of other people that have approached my dad with a completely different mindset. They've saw the positive side of him being very fit and have used him as a resource. They have used him as a place to go to to answer their questions about health and fitness and how they can do the kind of things that he's doing because, guys, it's nothing special. It's just hard work, it's dedication, it's discipline, and it's doing the work when you need to do it. That's all there is to it, and I know that's something my dad would say as well if anybody asked him. Anybody can do this, and he's that kind of person that's going to preach that positivity of it being possible for anyone else. 
But like I said, if you start to compare yourself to where you're at versus where he's at, if you're in that 50s age group, it's going to be very hard to stop and look physically and be like, dang, I'm not where I want to be because he's just in immaculate shape. But guys, like we always talk about, it is a place of positivity where you have to use it as a gravitational pull to get you going down the right path and get you looking for the proper avenues. Start looking for the healthier options. Start looking for the ways to work out, the things that are sustainable for you to have a healthier and a better life. And you've got to be able to take those strategies associated with that whole situation, regardless of if we're talking about the 50-year-old, whether we're talking about the race running and the intimidation on Facebook I got from that guy, or you're talking about the guy that played cornhole hole. You've got to be able to take that situation and find the positive spin in it. You can't turn this situation of comparing yourself to others because we know we're going to do it as humans. You cannot let that comparing yourself to other people go to a negative place. You've got to find ways to use it to push you in the proper direction and get where you want to go. That's why these guys like David Goggins, Andy Frisella, Rich Roll, whoever else, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, whoever your positive influence is in your life, it is a positive influence because it gives you the opportunity to hope, to dream, and to move yourself in a positive direction because you see it as possible for you. Guys, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Next in Line podcast. Like I said, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Next in Line Development. Make sure you share the show with like-minded people and always be prepared for whatever is next in line. <laughs>